Here we have our patient, Mr. Smith. As we begin, we can already notice a few findings. First, look at the spontaneous position he's been holding with his legs against gravity. This is posturing. Second, he's been looking straight ahead with minimal blinking. This appears to be staring. He's also not moving much, so we'll have to monitor for immobility. He doesn't appear to be excited or show signs of stereotypies or mannerisms. Let's try to talk with him. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hello. Uh, my name is Dr. Oldham. Um, I'm noticing your legs. You seem to be holding them out. Any particular reason why you're doing that? I don't know. Okay. Um, how are you feeling right now? Okay. Um, give me your full name. Thomas James Smith. Excellent. Where are we right now? Thomas James Smith. Okay, that's your name. What year is it? Thomas James Smith. Now, there are two abnormal things going on with this speech here. First, he's talking like a robot. That is manneristic speech. It's odd, but purposeful. Second, he keeps repeating his name. This is not verbigeration, which would sound like a broken record. This is perseveration. He keeps coming back to the same topic or answer even when I ask him different questions. Can you look over here at me, sir? Look over here at me. You seem to be staring straight ahead. I'm going to turn your head. Oh, all right. You'll notice that Mr. Smith does not copy me when I scratch my head. So we don't have evidence of echopraxia. And he hasn't echoed anything of what I've said either. So no echolalia. We also see that his gaze is fixed and non-reactive. He scores a three for staring. He allowed me to turn his head, but if he had not, if he had resisted, that would have been an example of negativism. Um, I'm gonna examine your right arm. I'm gonna pick it up. Just relax it. First, I'm gonna let it go, and when I do, let it just go straight down. I'm going to try something similar on your other side. Here, let's go ahead and lift your arm up. <clears throat> Same idea. When I let go, let it fall back down. Do you see that? He's maintaining the position I left his arm in against gravity. That is catalepsy, which is different from posturing because catalepsy occurs only after another person places the patient in a position. I'm going to examine this arm a little bit more. Let me move it. Okay, very good, very good. A little bit of resistance at the start, but everything seems to be loose here. We're going to feel some pressure. Great, I'm just going to put this arm back down. Let me come back to the other side. Um, same idea, let me move your arm. Okay, good, good, good. Seems like it's limbered up okay. Feel some pressure on your palm. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and put this down. So initially, there was increased tone in his arm, but within a few moments, I was able to bend it freely. On the Bush Francis scale, this is called waxy flexibility, like bending a wax candle as it warms. 
Also, once his arm was moving, there was no evidence of increased tone throughout the arc of movement, so he doesn't exhibit rigidity. Also, there's no Gegenhalten or grasp reflex. Next, what I want you to do, put your arms straight out in front of you. Very good. Now, do not let me lift your arm. Do not let me lift it. OK, same idea over here. Do not let me lift your arm. All right. Well, I'm going to bring them back down again. Yeah, very good, very good. OK. What we're seeing here is called mitgehen. His arm is rising with the slightest touch even though I had told him to resist me. He is also exhibiting catalepsy once again by keeping his arms elevated. Shake my hand. Very good. Now go ahead and put that back down. This time, do not shake my hand. OK. Based on his response, there is no evidence of ambitendency or automatic obedience. Any particular reason you decided to stand up like that? I don't know. OK. Um, well, I think actually that's the end of our exam. Um, I'll be back in just a moment. I appreciate it. At the end, his clapping is an example of impulsivity. One should keep in mind that Although they are rare, impulsivity and combativeness can happen suddenly at any point in the evaluation. I've already looked at his chart. His vitals have been fine, and he has been eating and drinking well, so no concerns for autonomic abnormality or withdrawal. I would score immobility as a 1 because he interacts briefly but exhibits markedly decreased movement overall. To review, we've identified a number of catatonic features. They include immobility, staring, posturing and catalepsy, mannerisms, waxy flexibility, impulsivity, mitgehen, and perseveration. You will see many of the remaining catatonia items in the last standardized patient training video.